Hello everyone, welcome to the next lesson of our Spring Security course. So in this lesson, we are going to focus on the custom authentication providers. Uh, it's an extension of the existing authentication providers and we have already uh, talked about those ones, right? Okay. So the, just to refresh our memory, uh, what are the authentication providers? So first, if you don't uh, know about those ones, I have a link into the description just watch that video but just to summarize an authentication provider within the spring security is the one who is responsible to authenticate a given request when i'm saying or a specific type of request so what does that mean it means that every authentication provider is supposed to handle a specific type of authentication request okay there is nothing there is nothing called as a one authentication provider which is going to do everything every different type of a request will be handled by the different type of a providers uh, for example if we want to validate a user based upon the uh, the profile stored into the database we will be using a DAO authentication providers uh, for LDAP based authentication, there is a LDAP authentication providers. Uh, with there is a SAML authentication provider. For example, you are using a Okta or VMware identity management or uh, Amazon Incognito. You probably will be using a SAML authentication providers, right? Uh, so that's the whole thing about the uh, authentication providers. Now the and in most of the cases, uh, like 95% of the cases, out-of-the-box authentication providers uh, or the, the one which is provided by the Spring Securities are more than sufficient. But there are certain use cases, or there are certain scenarios where most of them is not fitting your criteria, right? Uh, so what should we do? Uh, in that case, we will be going to end up creating our custom authentication providers. So let me give you one example. Uh, so while working on our e-commerce application, we have another, uh, uh, it was an, a kind of an app where uh, we were selling the uh, some kind of a subscription to the customers. And then the idea was, okay, we also want to integrate our e-commerce store with that app, but we don't want users to go through all the login journey and all sort of a things. And they were doing their own authentications, right? An authorization process. So what we ended up doing is what we decided that hey, uh, once the customer redirect to our store, we basically do a smooth login for those customers because that is already locked in, right? So most of the authentication provider was not fitting our requirement. So what we done is we ended up creating a specific authentication provider, which was only handling uh, the authentication request coming out from that. Uh, application for rest of the users the default uh, DAO authentication provider was working as is right so that's that's the way and there are a number of scenarios based upon your requirement but all in all these are the scenarios where you might create your own authentication providers okay all right so let's get started so before we jump into the coding part uh, I want to refresh our memory. We will just going to revisit our uh, authentication provider interface, see what we have there, okay? All right, so every authentication provider is extending the authentication provider interface, right? There can be a multiple layer of extension, but ultimately that's the entry point for all the authentication framework within the Spring Security. Right. And there are two methods. Uh, so let's go to the first method. Okay, this one supports. So this tells uh, to the Spring Security that what kind of a request this authentication provider can authenticate. Right. Uh, so as I said, right, your application could be handling a simple username form based uh, login request. Your application could be handling at the same time uh, LDAP. Uh, login or authentication process or it could be handling some other type of a authentication process right so there is not a one single provider so support method tells that to spring security that okay based upon the request type or authentication right whether it supports to authenticate that kind of a request it understand that kind of a request or not for example uh, 
in most of the web based login things right uh, we have a username password authentication token that means a token is a representation of a username password so if that kind of a request is coming DAO authentication provider will be consulted by spring security but if the ldap request is coming uh, spring security will not consult that one because that that uh, provider has already told that it can handle this specific type of a request so this is the method which based upon our requirement we will tell spring security what are what is the type of a request what are we expecting in the request where you spring security can call us to do the authentication okay and the return type is boolean either it returns a true and false if it returns a true this will be used for the authentication if false uh, this will be skipped and then this is the authentication okay so this is a, that's the entire logic we have already seen into the DAO authentication provider uh, all it does it takes the input uh, authentication object and then do all sort of authentication mechanism it's uh, entirely based upon your requirement you could be loading the customer profile from the database from the external system from a file whatever it is doing n number of different things okay but the ultimate goal is two things either user is authenticated and you we send the authentication object back from this request or if there is a problem we send the authentication exception from there all right okay so now let's go to our let's see how to build a custom authentication provider okay so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to implement our authentication provider interface okay all right so now once I implement this one, I will be forced to implement two methods, okay? And these are the two methods. Now, the first thing we are going to tell Spring Security what kind of a request our custom authentication provider is supporting, okay? So we, I will keep it simple. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to tell Spring Security that, hey, uh, I will be using this username and a password authentication token that means it's normal web based login request okay so let's go in this one so this is a token which contains all the information for example your principal credentials you can create your own token for example your request is going to support some xyz kind of a token right you create your own token and in your uh, uh, in our custom authentication provider we can tell that okay my application is supporting uh, that kind of a uh, token all right okay so that's the first thing we are going to do second thing we are going to do uh, i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep it simple and i'm going to use the uh, custom user detail service which is going to fetch the data from the database okay coming back to the main uh, logic okay this one authentication so for me, what I'm going to do is from the authentication, I'm going to get the username, we'll get the information from the database, and then uh, we'll, if everything looks good, we'll create a successful authentication object, okay? But as I said, uh, it could, it can be anything, and I don't know what kind of a logic you want to put in place, but uh, the idea, concept, workflow will remain same. so this is a simple thing okay from the authentication i'm getting my username and then if username is empty i'm sending a bad credential exception uh, where you will be seeing some message that hey username or password is invalid and then i am relying on my internal user detail service to load the user for us okay this is a custom user detail service it does couple of things uh, there is a description in the in the uh, there is a link in the description where you can see oh, how does it works okay and then finally if everything looks good i create a successful authentication object and a return the token that's the overall thing how to create a custom authentication provider right so let's do one thing now the last part of our application is uh, we need to configure this authentication provider with the spring security so that it can use that authentication provider all right and for that one 
we are going to go to our configuration class where we are doing all Spring Security configurations and we are going to uh, basically tell Spring Security that hey, this is the new custom authentication provider, use that provider, all right? So this is our apps uh, security configuration class which we are using throughout this uh, series, right? So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to inject the custom authentication provider here, okay? Uh, okay okay so we are going to import that one okay and the next thing what we are going to do is we are going to configure our custom authentication provider okay so we already uh, using the DAO authentication provider let me go there you see we have already configured the DAO authentication provider right so in this one uh, okay so this is the authentication manager builder where we basically tell which is the authentication provider we will be using in our case okay so i'm going to comment this out for now okay i'm going to use a different one okay so instead of custom authentication sorry auth provider which is calling our DAO authentication provider i'm going to inject the custom authentication provider that's all that's all you need uh, to inject your custom authentication provider all right uh, so with that uh, we have completed all the steps no 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 what i'm going to do is uh, just to, uh, to see if actually it's working or not i'm going to start our application i will open the login page we'll put a debugger point into the custom authentication provider and see if it actually working for us or not all right my application has started i have put a debugger point onto the custom authentication provider and here is the login page okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on the sign in button okay right so we have the control now onto our custom authentication provider right and you can see username password authentication token that's what our class is supporting as part of the support method right if the authentication is of the different type uh, our authentication provider will not be uh, taken uh, will not be called and i will be going to cover let's say if you have that kind of a requirement how you can do that we will we will talk over that maybe in the next uh, uh, lesson all right now so if everything works out what i'm going to do is okay let's quickly run through the code okay my user detail service are going to fill the details everything works fine i'm creating the authentication and we are done right and here we are we are logged into our dashboard all right so that gives an idea how to create a custom authentication provider and again uh, spring security makes it really easy uh, to create and configure and override the the default behavior for us and we have already seen that it was really easy to create a our own authentication provider and inject it into the uh, Spring Security workflow. All right. Uh, I hope you like this uh, tutorial and the series in itself. Uh, if you are liking this series of the Spring Security, uh, please subscribe to my channel and uh, please don't forget to uh, share this these videos. Thanks uh, for watching this tutorial.